So hi, Microbe Hunter here and today's video I dedicate to stereo microscopy. I'm going to be looking at a whole bunch of objects under the stereo microscope, like this coin for example, and I'll be collecting some dirt, really. Um, I've got a small needle, a very tiny and a very thin needle and I'm going to be scratching off dirt um, and all sorts of deposits of a variety of different objects and it's gonna be disgusting. And right now you can see that uh, I'm scratching away on the surface uh, of a coin. Um, the needle is uh, quite hard um, and it uh, leaves behind some scratches, but that's actually not really what I wanted to do. I wanted to find those places where uh, some dirt uh, accumulated and I tried to collect this uh, by carefully scratching it off. Yeah, and I was a little bit successful. And I'll be doing that with a whole bunch of other objects as well. And uh, some of those objects, well, they collected quite a bit of dirt. Um, it's actually quite uh, quite surprising. And especially in the corners um, of the coin, of course, this is where some of the dirt uh, also quite uh, well deposited. Um, yeah, and uh, the needle was actually a so-called entomological needle. So that needle is actually used to pin down insects for insect collections. And if you look very carefully, you can see that, yeah, the tip of the needle is quite uh, quite sharp and is able to even collect the tiniest um, amounts of dirt that has uh, accumulated. Actually, I did not do that, uh, but it would be interesting also to actually take this dirt that I collected and put it under a compound microscope. Well, what is this here? Something very close by glasses, the old ones, okay, the ones that basically I got replaced now. Uh, there was quite a bit of uh, dirt uh, here as well. Um, objects that are in daily contact with the human skin, of course, accumulate and build up grease and skin and a variety of hair and other things. Uh, and all of this stuff deposits there. It's a beautiful place for bacteria to grow um, and I think it's really necessary to give it a scrub and a clean every now and then but sometimes you're not able to see the dirt uh, because um, it's so small and, and the corners are so difficult to reach but under the stereo microscope yeah those everyday objects they can be quite dirty and uh, they can accumulate quite a bit of uh, of residue and, and dust and grease and uh, and all sorts of things you don't even want to know. Yeah, so I've been scratching away now on the glasses um, and uh, here you can see as well that uh, there's quite a bit uh, of stuff in the corners. Generally, um, objects that have a lot of corners and angles and so on, this is actually a preferred place for the dust uh, and for the dirt to collect. And in this case, it's not only dust, uh, but of course everything is sticking together because of all of the grease that is produced uh, by the skin. The bacteria love it there, really. Um, but then again, we do have a, an immune system that takes care that uh, all of those bacteria really don't uh, harm us very well. Yeah, but I think it was like quite, actually quite a satisfying little activity to scratch together all of this dirt uh, under the stereo microscope. Now, what is this here? Um, that is the close-up of a key. A key, okay, the door keys, and there too, there are a lot of corners and angles, and yeah, in those grooves, this is also where a lot of this dirt has accumulated. So I simply went with a needle into the groove, and I was to take out quite a bit of stuff. I don't even know what all of this is. I can imagine that there is maybe some grease also from from the door from from the door um, itself because there was some lubrication oil maybe in there that has uh, built up over the time. I don't know. Honestly, probably some some metals uh, that was scratched off because of the continuous friction of the key uh, and in in in, yeah, in the keyhole. So there are a variety of probably a variety of different things um, also that built up over the years often overlooked because that's a place that you actually never really check uh, for dirt. Uh, but uh, under the stereo microscope, again, quite a lot of stuff to be seen here. Yeah, and so I was happily scratching away all of the dirt and uh, getting everything out there. Um, yeah, and there was quite a bit of uh, this stuff there as well. Well, um, what I gener generally want to say about stereo microscopes is, is that I think that these are somewhat a little bit, um, yeah, uh, um, underestimated uh, devices. Uh, I highly recommend that if you're really interested in amateur microscopy and you don't have a stereo microscope yet, uh, to seriously consider also getting one of those because it really expands the possibilities of things that you can observe um, and especially opaque objects uh, like uh, these here are extremely suitable to be observed under the stereo microscope. 
Yeah, and here, what is this here? You will not guess so easily, but that is actually the LED of the flash of a mobile phone, okay? And look how much stuff there is on the mobile phone, okay? So much dust, well, what exactly? Well, probably skin, okay? Yeah. Objects that are in everyday contact with uh, humans, um, we shed off uh, a lot of skin every day. And this is not a speaker um, of uh, the mobile phone. And of course, uh, there is also a lot of uh, surface uh, where skin flakes can deposit. You sometimes don't even see this when you look at the mobile phone, but under the stereo microscope, there is a lot of this stuff visible. Um, sometimes you you can be happy that you actually don't know that the stuff is all there. Um, of course, also a good place uh, for bacteria and spores and so on to, to build up. Uh, and now you know why um, people are saying that actually computer keyboards and mobile phones and so on are actually pretty dirty objects because they're very rarely disinfected. For example, toilets at least. One might think the toilets are pretty dirty, but actually they're disinfected and cleaned on a regular basis normally. Uh, but other everyday objects like mobile phones and keys, as I just mentioned, computer keyboards, well, they're not really cleaned. Um, and uh, this is also the reason why they can also be a source uh, yeah, for spreading diseases. Yeah, so that's again the speaker of, of the mobile phone. And uh, I was focusing back and forth and uh, I was trying to remove a little bit all of those dust and the skin flakes. It was kind of difficult to do. It was actually because of static electricity, I think. It was uh, connected quite well to the mobile phone and was kind of difficult to remove. So um, yeah, also something that uh, cannot be um, easily seen. This here, also difficult to guess what it is. This is my wristwatch. Okay, um, and uh, that's a little screw of my wristwatch that I found and of course again angles and corners there and this is again the, a very good place uh, for skin and little hair and other things uh, to build up and uh, get compressed into those corners. Um, and uh, again I'm using my needle here to scratch everything out uh, to get it cleaned. Also was not quite easy um, because uh, these uh, screws and those things are quite small, um, honestly, and uh, can be a little bit difficult to reach. Therefore, one simply ignores them and does not really take care to clean those parts because that's not really something that is notable um, if you just look at it um, at a fleeting glance. Just don't see it. Well, that's uh, the band, okay? The for the strap for holding uh, the clock for the wristwatch. Uh, yeah, again here you can see that uh, in all of those places that are a little bit depressed and further down, there is basically where again uh, some dirt skin most likely accumulated. And here I'm also scratching away and removing all of these things. Yeah, it was a slightly a satisfying activity, I have to admit. <laughs> you scratch around uh, along and then you see all of the dirt being removed. Yeah, but actually um, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to clean it that thoroughly. Why? Because after a couple of days it's probably going to be just like before anyway, so it's kind of pointless. Uh, but it simply makes you aware or makes me, made me aware of how much more there, dirt there actually is uh, than what meets the eye. So yeah, I was uh, happily scratching away, taking care that I'm not gonna damage my uh, the, the, the wristwatch because the needle was uh, quite uh, quite sharp. Um, yeah, and also in the corners here where there was a hinge, where there was the hinge, um, I also kind of tried to remove um, the dirt a little bit and had some problems actually reaching all of the corners. Yeah, and that's basically uh, something that I kept on doing until I realized, well, there is actually another object that is kind of interesting. And that was my razor, okay, for shaving. Um, and uh, this one actually has an additional problem in, in that uh, there is, of course, also soap involved. And of course, there's also calcium carbonate. That means mineral deposits uh, from the water. And this actually formed, in some cases, a relatively hard crust. Uh, that was, um, yeah, when you were scratching it, it kind of broke off and it chipped off. Uh, so again, this dirt had a completely different consistency again than the other things that I was just uh, scratching off. Yeah, so that is a lot of, uh, probably a lot of calcium carbonate and mineral deposits uh, that um, uh, accumulated there. Um, probably together with some soap, again, some <laughs> skin as always. By the way, the skin is one of the most, uh, skin cells are one of the most uh, common components of household dust, by the way. Um, and so it's not surprising that we also find a lot of this, lot of this stuff here also on, on, the, on the razor. 
yeah also here i was uh, scratching away and that's why i think it's uh, one should not only exchange maybe the toothbrush regularly but maybe also other uh, everyday objects like razors and so on because it, that's it can be high, a hygienic issue here mm -hmm. as well yeah so i was scratching away um, happily um, and uh, then i decided well actually i'm just gonna throw the whole thing out and i'm going to buy a new one and that's what i did um, ultimately but uh, you can see that uh, here again on the metal surface uh, the calcium carbonate and the, the deposit and the residue did not stick very well um, and uh, it simply chipped off and flaked off uh, quite uh, quite easily you can see it here um, as well and then you can give it a rinse under the water and then everything is flushed away um, and what else do I want to say? Yes, let me continue a little bit with stereo microscopes. For those of you who don't know so much about it, uh, stereo microscopes, they don't magnify very much, uh, probably around maybe 60 to 80 times maximum. So actually the visual impression is actually much better than what you have just seen now um, yeah, in this very video because you don't see it st stereoscopically. I think for today it's enough. Um, again, please do check the descriptions below because uh, the description below, because I included a whole bunch of, uh, of links as well of my other projects that I have. I would like to um, also invite you over to my other YouTube channel. I would like uh, to ask you also maybe to support the channel. I have a Patreon um, uh, account. I also have a GoFundMe account for a microscope. I have a web shop. There's so many other things um, as well. And I hope that you're going to enjoy amateur microscopy as much as I do. I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye-bye.